Hi everyone, this is Screen Guard Guy. Welcome to another Dota 1 commentary. Today's game is going to be between BB Dota and IGT for the GEST September qualifiers. And now remember, if you guys are knocking for some Dota 1 action, you can always check out other commentators from Dota commentaries. Uh, with GEST coming up, I believe LD will be doing a majority of those. I can't really confirm it because he's not on Skype right now, but do check out his channel anyway. Uh, he's probably going to throw up a few games. B Ball is hoping to throw up a few, Doc as well. Uh, I can confirm Doc, I don't know about people in our LD. Still check out their channels, uh, you guys probably do. Anyway, we're just going to speed this right up. Neither team uh, have I've actually heard of, BB Dota as well as IGT, until this qualifier tour. And that's not completely unsurprising, but IGT have been just an absolute beast, have completely won me over. They have one particular player, Lucille, who's so far played an Invoker as well as a Pugna and have just been... I don't know, just really, really fun to watch. Hopefully, we'll get some good plays out of this game. It is fairly highly rated. We're going to be seeing Naga Siren banned out first. Lycanthrope, yes, Lycanthrope as well. The two probably most banned carries in the game, I want to say. Both have incredibly Imba skills. Uh, and they farm very, very well. They lane very, very well. There's no reason why you would want them in your lane. And, of course, they combo so well with so many heroes. I... Do believe, and in fact, it will be a Morphling band out as well. So another late game carry. Dark Seer is also going to take the fall. Well, yeah, he means a very, very impact, high impact hero. Queen of Pain as well, gone out. The high damage dealer, blinking machine, I guess is what I want to call her. But she's not really a machine. She is flesh and blood. She does get taken down a lot, particularly if you have a, a high stun lineup. Bat Rider is also going to be taken out, and it would be an immediate Furion pickup. Can't remember who the Furion player is for. Was it Ace Ace for IGT? Um, I can remember it was it was quite quite an interesting play. A lot of a lot of teleports. Uh, very very much a ganking Furion, uh, from what I recall, and which is always a bit more exciting, I think, than the Hand of Midas first semi late game carry get into Necro Book pushing Furion, which is it's not that it's less of an impact. It's certainly a lot more of an impact when you consider uh, the way the creep wave moves, uh, the amount of pressure they can exert, but. It's certainly much more fun to watch uh, Furion ganking a little bit. And anyway, we're just going to speed it up. Yeah, again, first pick coming in from BB Dota. It's going to be an Earthshaker as well as a Windrunner. Windrunner we actually haven't seen in quite a while, uh, now that I think about it. Such a powerful hero, such a great hero for initiation, for setups. Uh, yet still, I guess, getting pushed out of the way for other heroes, such as the Chaos Knight, Dragon Knight, who really knows. Um, Ancient Apparition as well. Uh, but she works so well in the ganking lineup, doesn't need a lot of farm, and just very, very popular overall. Uh, what else will BB Dota probably be looking for? I'm thinking one more support with a stun, like Eventual Spirit or Crystal Maiden, and then they're going to start picking up their hard carries. Or maybe even a hard carry first, probably. Uh, probably waiting to see what IGT do. IGT, on the other hand, well, they can either commit to a more... Uh, pushing lineup, uh, but instead I think they're going to go for a ganking. It will be Pugna. I believe Lucille will be picking that. Last game, it was played solo mid, and very, very interesting, very, very exciting to see. I'm completely dominated. Was it an anti-mage? <laughs> if I recall correctly, it was It was just cool. Beastmaster is going to be coming out, so probably Beastmaster mid. In fact, Beastmaster does handle that mid lane a little bit better, but do not underestimate the pushing power of the Pugna, so he does kind of work okay in mid lane, just the problem is he's slightly squishy and with a ganking lineup like what bb dota has it is probably not the best idea to stick your pugna in the mid lane and it will be a rubik picked up so that support with a stun sort of uh who are we going to be seeing next the damage dealers well there are quite a few people who still hit and hit hard we're going to be seeing wisp ban out do not want more ganking potential for bb dota if bb dota wanted to i think they could pick up a puck which would complement their lineup immensely, but I don't think they really need him. What they need is the damage Weaver, but Weaver doesn't really activate as early. Chaos Knight, Dragon Knight, all in the pick, all hard hitters, and all very, very common to see. Lashrak, we haven't seen in a while. It was going to be the ban. Mm, just wondering. Pugna, not really one of those heroes you want to pick up so early. I think it may have been a mistake. I mean, maybe they really want to claim him. They feel, you know, we can handle him with any lineup. Uh, but really one of those heroes you want to get when there's somebody with like a high, you know, spell. Uh, or low mana pool because that ward does restrict mana regeneration and high spell cost is probably for the best i'm thinking don't hit me on this but igt could use a tide hunter it would just be nice for that team fight and the fact they could use a puck for, for themselves i guess i mean igt usually their playstyle, based on the few games that i have seen is very mid game orientated high impact pushing just old school style. Go for ganks, win the lanes, get a lot of kills. Uh, not exactly kill a minute, but we're seeing 
similar play, and they use heroes that aren't really as expected for a ganking lineup, um, if that makes sense, such as the Pugna, such as an Invoker, and it's just it's a great effect, really, uh, at least so far for this tournament. I don't think I've seen them drop a game quite yet. We're going to speed it up yet again. Lonaya was banned out. Interesting. Very, very much looking to avoid physical DPS, I'm assuming, uh, in favor of more magical aligned heroes. Um, just so it makes more use of that ward. But still, you're going to have to deal with physical DPS anyway. I mean, there's always going to be a, so many, just so many right-clickers that they can pick. I mean, we've even seen resurgences of heroes such as Luna. Um, and shout-out to Micah Micah, apparently, from Ace Ace. Anybody know who that is? No? That's cool. I don't know either. We're just going to speed this up a little bit. Uh, I've already given my piece on what I think BB Dota are going to go for. Uh, it really depends on what their mindset is. They're going to ban out the Dragon Knight. Do not want to deal with that tankiness. And now it will be uh, IGT's turn to pick. What do IGT want? So who loses this game should say thanks to Arsh. Ace, ace, man. Chatting it up. Chatting it up. Anyway, we're going to speed it up yet again. Come on, hurry it up. Well, really, what is going through IGT's head here? Uh, they want to counter the physical right clicks. They want to force BB Dota to pick somebody with more magic, you know, spells reliant a bit on mana. So they're probably, I think a Chaos Knight pick up for themselves would not be a bad idea to prevent BB Dota from getting it. And having a Chaos Knight kind of complements the lineup. Chaos Knight, then get one more, maybe an Ancient Apparition. Yeah, it will be the Chaos Knight. I'm thinking like an Ancient Apparition or Crystal Maiden next for IGT. BB Dota, on the other hand, now they, they really want, I think I'm going to, I don't know. Tiny is a bad choice, actually, because it's low mana pool. Uh, it will be the Invoker pickup. Very, very interesting. I mean, considering when I when you talk about heroes with high mana cost, with that, you know, um, it doesn't really have high mana cost, but he does need mana, and you know, in terms of casting spells, he's gonna want to throw them out. So it's very, very interesting that he does get picked. I'm not gonna say it's a bad pick at the moment. I mean, Invoker's such a high impact hero, even early on, if he goes for the Exhort Wex, which I sorry, Exhort Quas, which I think is what he's gonna be doing. Um, what else in terms of potential for team fight? Puck wouldn't be a bad choice here. I'm I'm gonna say maybe Puck. Call me maybe Puck. Or a Tide Hunter. The hunt the tides, or just another right clicker. I'm thinking no, actually one of them. I'm going back to my original Ancient Apparition. Yeah, it is Ancient Apparition. Um, you do need that support element, and I think this is a very very nice rounded lineup. Very much fits the IGT. Playstyle now it's up to BB Dota. I think they should definitely try and round off this ganking lineup with somebody with a reliable stun and who can go ganking. I uh, don't want to say Vengeful Spirit unless you want to try and put Vengeful Spirit in like a carry position, semi carry, and I think she's a little bit squishy for that. Somebody who can semi carry, like a Rogue Knight. Unfortunately, Rogue Knight 15 second stun may be a bit tough to do, but you do want to put someone with a stun. You do want to be able to counter gank a little bit tanky, a little bit, a little bit survivable. Centaur, Warchief, uh, comes to mind, but I don't think he will be picked. He takes a little bit of farming. I don't think he has the highest impact. You want somebody who can really turn the tides of battle. Somebody who, even if he falls back a little bit, Shadow Demon would be a bad choice, but I'm not sure how he'd follow up with the whole ganking aspect. Somebody who can go late, really go the distance. <sighs> not many heroes fit that roster, and to be frank, most of them have been banned out. And I cannot possibly predict what it's going to be. So I'm just going to speed it up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And it will be a Pandera Brewmaster. Of course, there you go. The tankiness, the gankiness. All of it. It's in one hero. The man. Pandera Brewmaster. It's going to be... And I'll just introduce the players. PKMZ going to be playing. Earthshaker Lights is going to be playing that Rubik. It'll be plus on the um, Pandera Brewmaster. Likely going to go min, get a quick bottle. Look at... Um, it's going to be Jal 3 z Going to be playing that Alaria. She's gonna go for a ring of protection. Gonna get some. Um, gonna get for a Basilius very very quick, and it will be EXZ playing the Invoker. It looks like the five man smoke gank. This is what IGT like to do. Uh, before we saw them go into the Radiant Jungle uh, as five man. It's gonna be Lamion playing that. Lemion gonna be playing the Chaos Knight. Lucille playing his Pugna. Troublemaker gonna be playing the Beastmaster. Ace Ace gonna be on the Ancient Apparition. Yeah, he's a support player. And we can't handle you. That was right. Is gonna be playing the Furion. Looking for some early kills. Are they gonna get it? They have a number of stuns, but Fisher should be able to ward everyone back if they are, do meet. GLHF has been called. GLHF. Good luck, half fun. Uh, yeah. And anyway, let's just check out some items real quick. Chaos Knight gonna be going, I'd say, in a tri lane, likely. Just looking at his items. Uh, Beastmaster. Yeah, he's definitely gonna go mid. Uh, gonna get that bottle. Unlikely, he's gonna go for a solo lane. 
Uh, no, yeah, we could, we could technically could with those items. Uh, Pugna gonna go solo lane, I think. Um, gonna get a quick bottle as well. Actually, either one of them could go mid. It's very, very interchangeable. Ace, ace on the Ancient Apparition. No idea where he's gonna go, <laughs> to be completely honest. Uh, try, sorry, yes, try lane with the Chaos Knight. What am I saying? And, uh, jungling? No, no idea where Furion's gonna go. Gonna say round off that try lane, but it looks like it will be a dual lane, actually, with the Chaos Knight Ancient Apparition, which is a very powerful dual lane. Ragnar Stonehoof. Gonna be smoking around, walking, everybody looking for some danger. Who planted the sword? Ace Ace, okay. And now it will be a dual lane mid instead. Ancient Apparition, which is cool. There's a long range Fisher to start things off. Telekinesis plus the clap. Oh, is Chaos Knight in trouble? He's taking so much damage. Cold feet. He's looking solo. Immediate salve up, but is there any follow up? No, just gonna avoid uh, first blood and committing four men to the middle and not getting a kill. Well, that's. That's not the best thing in the world to do, and it will be Furion going to jungle, so it'll be two, well, yeah, two solo lanes. Pugna going to have some free farm up top, nice, we done, capitalizing on the fact that, well, you can't really do very much, and it will be Beefmaster going to the bottom, so I'm looking at a two bottle thing. Exhort going to be picked up first on the Invoker, just going to give him some nice extra damage. Uh, meanwhile, up top, oh, certainly, they can't be serious. Pugna against uh, a Windrunner as well as a Rubik, it's going to be a tough lane for him to fight, and he's going to want at least a couple of ganks on these two. You do not want to let them have uh, so much farm. It's going to be very, very difficult for Pugna is what I'm saying. Furion probably going to, he's already level 2, once he hit level 3, expect to see him some king of ganking ganks. Uh, going to be dual, two dual lanes, dual lanes in the middle. Uh, Ancient Apparition slightly better, I think, at harassing with those cold feats. I can just push the Pandaren Brewmaster back. Uh, keep in mind though, all three heroes are ranged. Uh, he's always got his Nether Blast thing to push the creep wave. So Oblivion should be okay in the levels department, just not so okay in the farm department. He will be taking a lot of harass and needs that ball ASAP. Meantime, who's going to win up here? I'm sorry, at the bottom, we're just going to see a bit of a go. There's Cold Feet, Reality Rip, one second stun, right click, right click. Are they going to get that first blood? It procs, there comes Spirion, just to guarantee it. First blood will be going in the way of IGT, nicely done. Meanwhile, at bottom lane, what was I talking about? Who is going to win? Well, melee against ranged. It's pretty biased, I'd say, towards um, towards the Invoker. But of course, Beastmaster, one of those heroes who can handle ranged hero. Uh, he's going to be skilling some inner beast. Going to be pushing that crit wave. He's already got his bottle. Going to be using those axes for harass. In the meantime, mid lane, I think, has been pretty much won just by getting, guaranteeing themselves for both first blood as well as that one kill. Uh, Pandera Brewmaster going to have to look out. Once he hits level 6, he will be trying to gank and trying to get a kill. Uh, not a gank, well, initiated team fight on this mid lane. But of course, when you have, there's a Furion, he can always be jumping in. I mean, already level 3, already handling it. Probably getting one level of each. Uh, he certainly used a Sprout, he certainly used his Treants, and he certainly used a Teleport. So I can actually say definitely getting. And yep, in the meantime, as predicted, Pugman not having the best. Fade Ball just lowers his right-clicking potential. It does a ton of harass, it's always power shots. And here we go, some a bit of harassment coming in. Ancient Apparition actually does have to be slightly careful. Uh, he can, of course, be taken down if there is a Fisher as well as a Clap. And up top, whew, Power Shot, gonna do it. Bottle has been picked up, so all the bottled heroes have the bottle. Uh, probably every time there's a rune up top, Pugnum will be getting it. Every time there's a rune up bottom, uh, Beastmaster might be getting it. Uh, if they can push the Creep Wave enough, that is. Both heroes, you know, I mean, Inner Beast is great at pushing Creep Wave, and you've got that Blast. Which is also great. Uh, you do not want to leave the heroes alone to farm. Let's just check out the farm anyway. Levels level five against level three. And we're gonna be seeing some ancient farming with the axes, which is something you can do. Uh, certainly recommend it if you're going against a range hero. It's just one of the reasons why Beastmaster can, of course, uh, tackle the range heroes in a lot of different lanes. Uh, not usually the solo top though. But I mean, he can always pull. There's gonna be a clap just for the harass. Panda gonna go for a bottle. He should be. Yes, he will be, and he will be getting it. And at that moment, so he's gonna be able to use that clap to uh, harass and sort of semi win the lane. I want to say, is he blowing? No, he's not. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna be seeing once again just a bit of uh, jungling from the free on level three. Gonna be hit level four very very soon. And ancient Apparition has skill tribute bonus, likely cold feet plus tributes plus cold feet plus tributes. You guys know the drill. Beastmaster hasn't well only used up a single tango. Very very surprising. Ring of Basilius completed and turned. On on the on the windrunner, so going to be putting some pressure at the top lane. Very surprised they haven't got a kill quite yet. Uh, means must be some pro positioning for the Pugna. We're going to be seeing a blast just for a bit of harass. Uh, keep in mind if he gets uh, telekinesis, 
and Shackled, he is as good as dead. Kofi gonna be going off. There's the clap. Fisher is gonna stop that gang, but here, Furion's already in. Right click gonna do it. And now a Pandaren Brewmaster looking in a little bit of danger. Teleports in immediately. Is there a Chaos Knight? Chaos Ball? Nope. No mana. No Sprout's just gonna stop that. Yes, no mana. He's gonna have it in about three seconds. Two, one, no. There's no target. 140 mana, by the way, if you guys are wondering for Chaos Ball. If I'm not mistaken, it may be slightly more, slightly less than that. I believe it is 140. Anyway, once again. Who is this? It's the Rubik could be coming out. Recognizing, you know what? Valeria can handle the top lane. Let her get some more EXP. Already level 5 on the Puck, and he has a Puck now, and he has picked up a Boots of Speed. Um, the score is currently 2 to nil, and I do believe that it is time BB Dota try and make some ganks and kills. I mean, they are more of a mid game lineup. Although well, Panda can sort of take them to the late game if he gets an Aghanims and he gets the right items. He, I don't think, hits quite as hard as the Chaos Knight, and certainly not as tanky, even if he does have those uh, Primal Split, you know, spirit things. Uh, fun, fun fact about the Primal Split things, the things that he can cut into three, not considered a hero unit, so if you want to pop smoke and deceit under it, you are perfectly clear to get out. Uh, it won't reveal you. And Quas is going to be skilled, so he's actually going for the Exhort Wex build, or if I'm not mistaken. Uh, which, of course, very, very common. Here it goes. Cold Feet's going to be going off. Three seconds stun on Rubik. He is as good as dead. One more hit from the Furion. No, but nice Fisher. Stun on two. Oh, no. Actually, Rubik is going to get away. Now, Furion looking in a lot of trouble. Is there going to be another Sun Strike? Oh, nicely done. Going to hit. Uh, we didn't see the animation. I'm just going to finish up this, and I'll be restarting my Dota presently. And we're going to be seeing some right clicks. Will Furion actually be going down? Yes, he will. Going to restart the Dota now. And hi guys, we're back. Uh, apologies for that, just had to restart a little bit because, well, we couldn't see some of the graphics. And here it goes, the big kill on the Furion. Power Shot was actually going to pick that one up. And the chase is actually going on for the Ancient Apparition. Not quite going to get him. Score currently 1-2, to two, so no big difference really. Uh, although in terms of farm, let's just check out the levels and all that really, really quick. We're going to see uh, level 44754 four, against 75475. Four, I actually feel a slight advantage for the Scourge, which is really seen from their kill advantage, as well as their any really big items picked up. No, it's still just the boots. Windrunner, of course, doing a fantastic job. In the mid lane, do we have a bit of a go? Those illusions, quite beastly. Uh, and while the lane may have been slightly won, I think, from the Scourge, uh, certainly the Sentinel are doing an admirable job of trying to win it back. There goes Ancient Apparition. Is there a bit of a dive actually going on? Oh, Pugna. Wow. Trap slightly. Power shot. Not going to cancel. There's the there's the blast. Just going to do a little bit of harass. In the meantime, mid lane. There's a go. Going to be made. D uh, deep dives here. The four second Chaos Ball. And look at the tower doing all that damage. But here it comes. Is there going to be a Panda split? Fade Ball. Reality Rift. Where's a Roar going to be going off? Rubik will be dropping. And look at that Sun Strike. Going to catch the Chaos Knight. Right clicks are going to be going on. They're trying to fight this out. And no, no, no dice, unfortunately. It was a one-for-one one trade. And what is going to be going on? Ancient Apparition just going to be coming in. He has picked up an Urn of Shadow, so that's going to help with the ganking potential. Meanwhile, Tower is definitely going to drop. It looks like Panda is going to be whacking at it. He's just hit level 6, uh, which is the reason why he didn't split before, I want to say. Tower looking so low. Are they going to get to 9? No. And is the go going to be made on the Ancient Apparition? That's the question on everyone's fingertips. No. On everyone's tongue. And there's the go. There's the split. Oh no. Long range Fisher Ancient Apparition is going to fall. Score currently 3 is to 3. Completely even up. And now they have taken down one tower. And now they have taken one down one tower. So the Sentinel having a commanding lead. Uh, anything else going on? Well, up top, Pugna doing his best to push. Already hitting level 8. Going to be getting some mana boots. Very nice choice, I want to say. Not really the game-changing item. And he is actually going to claim a tower for himself, I want to say. Uh, his blast does one-third damage to building, so it's always um, a good idea to max it first. Meantime, bottom lane, looks like there's going to be some form of defense. Windrunner's going to come in. She's going to initiate with a power shot, I think. Uh, just to at least clear some of those treants. Yes, no, maybe so. Chaos Knight looking in. One second stun. I think slightly out of position. Is there going to be a shackle for him? He's taking a lot of... No, no damage. Everyone's going to have to back out. Here comes the Panda. He's already used his split. Keep in mind, there's a clap. Oh, the damage. Roar's going to go off in him. Not the best chain stunning, but Panda will be going down. Should not have gone on. Ward has been dropped. And everyone's just on the skirt side. Just going to get out of there. Just happy and con sorry, very content with their one kill. Top tower also was taken down. So a nice swing back from the Scourge. 
Just want to talk about this for a little bit. Ring of Protect. Sorry, Ring of Basilius. Going to go for Mana Boots. Very, very unusual to see it on the Alaria. Likely to counter that Pugnus Ward. Just good to have some extra mana. Fisher's going to stop that push. I don't think they can actually do this unless they, well, unless they win and get a few kills. Pugna being very, very aggressive here. Chaos Knight going to initiate with two seconds stun. Cold Feet. There's a Fade Ball going to be thrown. Telekinesis. Urshaker's going to drop. There's a Power Shot. There's anything else. Ward has been dropped somewhere. It looks like Chaos Knight did so low, but just going to get away thanks to a nice Sprout. Pugna doing the work of a one-man carry. Actually going to have to chase it out with the Alaria. Alaria running for him. She wants this. Chaos Knight going to heal up and run away. Pugna is the only one in danger. Is there going to be a wind run for him? Is there going to be a shackle shot just for the mini stun? 0.75 seconds. And here it goes. Now Pugna's turning around. He wants something. Three second stun on the Alaria. Is there a blast? Blast will try and do something. Chaos Knight Reality Rift going to get himself a Rubik. Is there anything else? Clap is going to go off. Ancient Average and Ice Blast. Oh, it's going to hit. But no, nope. Unfortunately, just going to just gonna miss. And it looks like that is the end of that, I want to say. Anything? Total score is 3-6, to six, so nice swing, nice jukes, nice kiting from the Scourge. Gonna get it. And it looks like everyone's gonna be going for mana boots nowadays. Rexar. Very unusual to see him with mana boots. Uh, his mana pool is not the worst. Um, but he does have, you know, quite a number of costly spells. And he has a bottle, though? Okay. I mean, I like it. It seems to work. So why not? Pugna gonna be going up top, gonna get his farm on. Wonder if he's gonna go for the Aghanims. Uh, the thing about uh, Lucille's Pugna does like to use that mana drink quite liberally and have a zero second cooldown. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's only gonna get, be able to farm very fast. Here it goes. Big gank coming in the middle. Meteor was dropped. There's a Fisher. Gonna claim the life of that Chaos Knight. Nice counter. Nice gank coming in from the Sentinel. And I don't think the Scourge can defend this tower. Nope. Are the Sentinel even gonna push? They do have a lot of pushing potential. Fade Ball coming in. Clap. Looks like boss has been picked up. Meantime, let's look at Pugna. He's going to be wanting to push that bottom part. I don't think he has a... Yeah, you know, he does have a TP scroll, so he can jump in at any time. Let's check out the items. going to go from Quas. He's going to go... Wow! Yule Scepter completed very, very early. Going to skip the phase boots. Going to go straight Yules. And we're going to be seeing the Kush being made. Ooh, there's the Axes. Uh, Ancient Apparition Ice Blast going to be coming in. Is it going to hit? Yes, it will just hit the Wind Runner. Uh, unfortunately, not the highest impact at this point, but it's a very, very low, a low cooldown duration. Panda a little bit out of position, uh, not going to be actually initiated upon, which is fine. Meantime, the push will be going on. Triant pushes incredibly fast. Do not underestimate Pugna as a pusher as well. And they may claim a middle tower for free. And look at the creep wave at the top. Nicely done. Mechanism has been picked up on the Windrunner. No, just a um, Nurzum's Buckler. How do you pronounce that? Nazrum's? Not, not Risen's Buckler. And Larry, is there going to be an initiation? I thought there was, might be a roar. Nope, going to claim that, uh, that, sorry, that tower in, in favor of the mid, sorry, giving up the mid tower to claim a bottom tower. Apologies. And yeah, it will be the mechanism going to be picked up on the Fury on already getting those parts. Looks like Lucille's going to be gravitating towards the bottom. He's picked up an Invis Rune. He's going to be going, it could still be very, very seriously in Aghanim's, uh, not so bad, and, ooh, is there gonna be a go man decrepify life drain, oh, the blast, gonna get a solo kill, nicely done, Lucille, and we're gonna be seeing a go, I think, made somewhere around here, there has to be, nope, absolutely not, a lot of teleportations back, and looks like just gonna get away, wanted to roar, he even began the animation, but very, very lucky with that, or maybe not, um, I really think, that actually, the Sentinel could have taken that one, in terms of towers, let's look at it, it's currently three aside, um, sorry, um, two, oh, it's so difficult to talk. <laughs> Gonna be two tier one towers down on the t on the top as well as the middle, and one there's Reality Rift in Fisher along on two as well as a Shackle Shot on two. Gonna stop that gank. Gonna save both their lives. Nicely played from the Sentinel. It's always good to see beautiful plays like that. You don't even have to get a kill. Just stuff like, like being able to mess with the get a counter gank, waste people's time. It is just huge. And we are gonna see no boots on the Rygor Stone Hoof. Not a telling. Not a good sign. Level 6, we're going to check out the farm. How close is he to Boots? He's only at 330 gold. He's only died 3 times, which is not actually that good. Uh, it looks like Tranquil Boots going to be picked up on the Invoker. Not a bad choice. Gives you a lot of move speed. It's certainly comparable to the Phase Boots. Anything of interest? Nope. Uh, Chaos Knight going to go for Django, likely. Uh, Buckler... I know, I'm not sure what Panda's going to go for. Could be an Agonist for himself, though normally you do want a Point Booster. It looks like... Wow, uh, Roshan is going to be done very, very early. Well, you can do it with this lineup. In fact, they could have, I think, level 1 Roshan uh, with some good timing. Can't, there goes Cold Feet. And do the Sentinel know is the question. I do not believe they do. Uh, he can always launch a quick Sunstrike in to check if he does need to. It looks like he will be going down. 
Ooh. Keep in mind that damage is pure. What level is he at the moment? Level 10. So may not have maxed the Exhort. And yes, they are going to claim it. And Oblivion will take it. So the Pugna going to give that um, Aegis to the Pugna. Very, very interesting choice. What's going to be going on? Power Treads, not Mana Boots. Mechanism has just been fixed. Finished. No... No bracer yet, and here it goes. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast gonna come in. You're gonna try and kill Windrunner looking so low. Gonna get knocked down. Here it goes. Shackle shot. Uh, cold feet. There's a decrapify. Big Ancient Apparition Ice. Uh, sorry. Big uh, Life Drain gonna be coming out as well as the Echo Slam. Fortunately, not enough. Ooh, some right clicks with that Reality Rift. Gonna claim life with that Earth Shaker. Here comes the Meteor doing a ton of damage and looks like a lot of trouble for the Invoker. Decrapify going on the Rubik is gonna go down. I'll just, that sounded a little bit disjointed. It is a very chaotic team fight, but overall, a four man kill. IGT, beautiful teamwork, nice initiation there. Uh, and yeah, just that's all I can say. Django going to be picked up on the Beastmaster. Lovely choice. What is going to be going on for anybody else? Looks like it likely going to be a Django. Multiple Django's not the most uncommon thing in the world. Uh, and they do like it just to pop it, just for that 10% extra. It's just so useful with the push, uh, as if you needed more pushing ability. Considering if you're, uh, do believe that at this point, it is safe to say the Sentinel are losing. Going to check out the levels really, really quick. Um, there we go. For Scarlet, the score is 4 to 11. 6, 8, 10, 7, 6 against 11, 8, 9, 10, 8. Sentinel do not have the late game, keep in mind. And looks like, ooh, is he going to actually be caught out? Reality Rift, that's going to do it. Cold Feet's going to drop. Shackle Shot, here it comes. Ward has been dropped. It's going to do a lot. Two seconds. Oh, there comes a Life Drain. Going to pick off that Windrunner. A Reality Rift in. Are they going to get anything? No. Panda just a little bit too fast, but they are going to clear this creep wave. What do the Sentinel need to do? It's very, very difficult to push out against a Furion. They're going to need to try and get some major ganks and not be completely out of position they're gonna to need to i think do some extra warding i don't think i've seen any of their wards up so far i don't believe this is theirs is it yeah no that one is there uh they're gonna need quite a few more gonna to need to know where the opponent players yeah the opposing players where igt are at all times try avoid those ganks and try to get some counter ganks of their own i mean you've got heroes like furion who hasn't got boots you can you can bring him down you do have quite a stun number of stuns there's a four second stun roar is gonna go up not the best chain stunning life drain is gonna do it that does a ton of damage by the way it's average ice blast not going to kill anybody, but nicely done. Furion looking for something. No, nope. power is going to go down. I think this may be the final push as my Warcraft 3 does some shenanigans. We're going to be seeing, yep, the Axe is going to try and clear it. Here's the here's the Fisher and anything else. Some right clicks. In case you thought uh, when I said here's the Fisher, it was slightly out of sync. No, that was just me saying it about a second too late. Power Shot's going to try and clear that. Here's the Trans. Ooh, Yules to initiate. Moyodier, there's a deafening blast. Gonna do so much damage as well as Reality Rift. Telekinesis, are they gonna bring down the Chaos Knight? Could be big. Two seconds on Chaos Ball. Here's the Shackle Shot. What's going on? Panda Split has just happened. Are they gonna get a stun? Get the stun off on. Oh, nope, not gonna quite do it. And now the chase is on. They're gonna want at least one kill from it. There it is. The tornado on the uh, Beastmaster. There's the boulder toss. So much damage. What? It's not enough. Panda gonna come in. Where's the clap? There's the clap. Drunken Haze as well. Right clicks gonna finish him off with a power shot. And here it goes. A nice, nice uh, defense. I guess I want to say. Actually get out a few kills. Six to fourteen currently. Uh, but keep in mind, look at the top lane. This guy pushing like a beast. That is gonna be for a Necro book. Which is gonna increase his pushing potential even more. BKB is being picked up on the Pugna. Yeah, I forgot he does like to do that. Um, very, very useful choice, especially if you're going to be life draining. You don't want to get stunned. BKV, keep in mind, is a channeling spell, and if you don't have an Aghanims, it does have a cooldown. And even if you did, it it's quite an expensive spell. Mechanism almost up on the Windrunner. Let's check the Earthshaker, see if he has his boots or not. For yes, he do does have the boots. No mana boots yet. Let's check his gold and see how far away from that he is. About a thousand gold. It is not a good sign. Uh, but in the meantime... <sighs> Well, the Sentinel really do need to push the creep out, which is exactly what they're doing, exactly what they see. Going to go for Django Nyx on the Invoker. A lot of mobility, very, very nice choice. Uh, they cannot take fights in or near their base. It's just too much collateral. It's just too much extra damage going to be done towards their towers. And as we see it, look at the big ganks smoking up. Coming in from the Invoker, they do want it. See, that's the danger of pushing. We get caught out. Reality Rift is a long-range initiation spell. Immediate self. Yules. Ward has been dropped. Oh, despite being able to drop the meter, it's going to go down to the damage. And now this will convert into a tower push. 
Pogna able to clear the creep wave so very, very fast. Maybe baiting might be good for the Sentinel to bait out and then launch their own counter gank. The problem is IGT sticking together, including so powerful in terms of that team fight. You could Panda slightly out of position here, actually. Nope, just gonna back off. Very nicely done. Popping the jangles already. Jangle good is gonna be multiple jangles are gonna be picked up. Gonna assist with that push. And Windrunner forced to go back. This is just not good for BB Dota at this point, but just beautiful play from IGT, absolutely controlling the pace of the game. I think you're gonna have to ban Furion if you want to play against them. That's it. For starters, ban Furion. And don't let Pugna farm. You have to get at least a few ganks off on that Pugna. Do not let him get um, farm. Do not have a good game. Life Drain, look at that. The Championship Ice Blast, unfortunately not gonna hit. And I believe Pugna, Pugna very, very bold. Uh, he's not one of the tankiest heroes in the world, yet he's still willing to just move forward and that may be a problem here it comes no deafening blast was able to hit uh sunstrike as well unfortunately not able to get the kill and of course he can life drain himself back up it he drains pretty darn fast why is his why is his health regen so high look at that that's through the roof for an intelligence hero that seriously is that's not right he's gonna yeah just life drain the creep why not gonna get full health he's only sitting at 986 health and he seems unkillable uh, just great play, and it's not like he's standing really far back as you'd see a Rubik do or whatever, um, the way most intelligence heroes would be doing. He is actually just at the forefront. It's a bit weird. Look at the war. See, he's going against it. 1v4 life drain. Is there going to be going off? He's going to take stuff. I use an apparition ice blast. Going to hitting all. There comes a blast. Oh, the axes. Absolutely insane. Lucille getting a wicked sick. He was godlike with, a, with an invoker. I've never seen... In a professional game, godlike, until I saw that Invoker play coming in from Lucio. Uh, is it is it a secret that I'm fanboying? I mean, it's it's just, I don't know, that, that Oblivion, it's just some good play. We don't normally see it from Oblivion, who's, you know, both a situational pick and usually put very, very far back, but IGD have made him a staple. And I think you may even have to respect Ban that, <laughs> that um, Oblivion. That's just going to say it. You may have to. Look how ballsy he is. Be crap if I can initiate. There's the blast. Is he gonna get life drain? Roar's gonna go off on the panda. They wanna kill him before he can pop the ultimate. Big meteor. Nice effects. There's an ice wall gonna be placed. Now they're gonna have to move back. But no ice walls already just falling down. And that was a beautiful go. Just a pickup of two kills. And the ward, the way he's dropping the ward, his positioning of the ward. That's one of the, it's not the hardest part, but it, it's a pretty big part. In terms of Dota, it's a it's a pretty big part of, of trying to win the game. And look at that nice go. De but of course, you can decrepify the war. Unfortunately, not done so in time. Ice wall is going to be dropped yet again. Here's the go is going to be made. Life drain. Look at the damage. Lucille going to get a monster kill. It's an apparition. Ice blast going to go in. Not going to hit anybody. But Chaos Knight will be dropping. Unfortunately, towers too much. Glyph has been popped. Are the Sentinel going to be able to defend this? There's a telekinetic throw. Not going to get... Yes, going to get the stun just off on the Beastmaster. Teleport in from the Earthshaker. Hey, Gecko Slam. Unfortunately, not enough impact. Panda is back. Does he have this ultimate? Does he have the ultimate? Look at Lucille looking so low. There's Clap. Life Drain. There's the ultimate. Fortunately, Sunstrike not able to do anything. Oh, Nether Blast was stolen. Oh, man. Here it comes. Furon taking all the damage from that ultimate. Meanwhile, Lucille does eventually drop, but he does have the Aegis. Not even able to pick off an Ancient Apparition Immolation damage, doing next to nothing. Earth Panda's all that's left. Does he have a clap? He's going to get stunned. Cold Feet is going off. Decrepify. There it goes. Is going to fall. Amazing play from IGT. And Chaos Knight, in the meantime, has just run back. No sweat. No kick. Going to be going for BKB next. And here it goes. Go in. Go in. Go, go. Reality Rift. Three seconds stun. Oh, nice job by the ward. Oh, Ward is actually going to pick off the Invoker of Beyond Godlike once again. Lucille, my, one of my new favorite players, Decrepify. Oh, man, there's a Blast Life Drain again. Gonna get it. Oh, unfortunately, not going to pick up that kick. That kill, Lemion. You know? KS, man. KS. 99 CS. Let's just check out how many kills Pugna has got. It's 10 and oh, Are you kidding me? Wow, that is some good play from the Pugna. I love, I do love seeing Pugna plays. I'm sorry if I'm fanboying a little bit, if I'm a little bit biased. What can the Sentinel do to come back from at this point? It is very, very difficult. I mean, it's not like they don't have the heroes to do it. Uh, it's not that the Sen the Scourge have an overwhelming uh, command. I mean, they do have a Rax. It's just that by not winning these team fights, they're a bit under-leveled to do so. Uh, it's not really outpicked, but um, 
Unfortunately, could not capitalize in the laning phase. Two seconds stun. Going to be going off on the panda. Telekinetic throw. Ooh, shackle shot. Beautifully done. Are they going to be able to follow this up with a few kills? Deafening blast. Oh, are they going to get it? Sunshine, unfortunately, just going to miss. Life drain's going to be on. Ah, oh, Chaos Knight just going to get away. Thanks to that nice roar from the Beastmaster. Right clicks axis. Going to get that panda. And there it goes. Power shot. Going to try and get the Chaos Knight. Unfortunately, not able to. Hagna finally falls. Here comes the ice blast. Least gonna get that uh, end that streak and ooh, Inchinapper, sorry, Invoker looking in a little bit of trouble. Is Kofi gonna proc? No, it won't. He's taking so much damage. There's a long range fish. You're gonna stop Beastmaster from coming in. Invoker so low, but he's gonna take, he's gonna survive as well as Urshiger even lower. Is he actually gonna survive? Ancient Apparition looks like he wants some solo kills. Here it comes, Invoker. You can handle an Ancient Apparition Sun Strike. Unfortunately, not gonna hit. There's the Yules for Initiate. There's a big meteor, Telekinetic Stun Throw, Fade Ball, gonna drop him. Ancient Apparition, you'd want to solo these heroes? You can't quite yet. <coughs> Looks like Invoker not yet finished his Django. Uh, just, I think, huge amounts of, of strength can be played for on the Panda. Very, very difficult to come back at this point against the Fury on the... <sighs> really, it, it, it's hard to say. Do you want to focus the Pugna? It's a very unusual pick, that's the thing. I mean, he's not... He does a ton of damage, there's no mistaking it, but you've got heroes such as uh, Fury on, so heroes such as Chaos Knight, Pretty much, uh, what I want to say is that everybody in the Sentinel side is a threat. It's a semi-carry. They don't have the traditional support, so to speak. They're all support. They're all carries. And there's nobody you really want to fight. I mean, except from the Ancient Apparition. Uh, played by Ace Ace. So it's, I guess, the four carry idea. <laughs> the four carry role, which I don't think is actually being done. I know there's a three carry strat. Um, not so sure about four carry strat. Don't know if any pro players really talk about it. Is this even a 4 carry strat? It doesn't sort of feels like it. Um, feels like a Furion is more like a push carry. It's like a different kind of carry. Instead of having the normal right click carry, you've got a push carry. Not to say that Furion doesn't right click hard as heck. But he's a push carry, that's, that's what I'm saying. Gonna be a... Well, Vladimir's offering great, great pushing item. And that Hyper Snow gonna help him so much with that life steal. So he's gonna be right clicking hard. So they turn Beastmaster into essentially a right clicking beast. BKB up on that Chaos Knight. What more do you need from him? Hex is going to be going on the Oblivion. Nice choice. Just bravo, sir. Just bravo. That is over. There's no kill like overkill, is there? Um, I mean, what were we saying about the Chaos Knight? Uh, he's got the stun, Reality Rift, Phantasm's hit as hard as heck. Looks like Windrunner is going to go. Uh, GG will be called. Going to pull up the scoreboard and just going to give it a pause. We will be finishing the game. Do not worry about that. Just want you guys to see the exactly who has what. Chaos Knight was going to be picking up, sorry, has picked up the Aegis. Uh, no other really, really honorable mention items, I want to say. Uh, and everyone is going to leave, so that's the end of that. No, looks like Invoker, Sunstrikes, he's going to launch everything. Going to solo one man the whole team. Reality Rift, but nice Fisher going to save his life. Whew, everyone's going to get out of there just fine. And, yeah, final Raxes are going to go down if you guys want to watch. Most of you will have actually stopped watching by now, but once again, I think just now a great time to plug what is going to be coming up in the future. More games, more Dota 1, uh, definitely, if I can. Um... A lot of Dota 1 going to be coming off from DotaCommentary.com. I don't think there are many Dota 2 tournaments at this point. So hopefully maybe even Lumi will be joining in on the fun. Um, if we can maybe convince him to do a dual cast. Would you guys like that? I mean, we did. I did do a dual cast with him earlier. But unfortunately, it wasn't as... It was just a, before TI2, I mean. Um, unfortunately, the game wasn't that fun. Um, so it ended up not being posted. But it was a great time. He... he, he uh, Okay, this stuff is just, I'm going to be going on a rant, so it's no longer really about Dota, or this game, really. Um, we're talking a lot about anime. He recommended this thing, uh, Steins Gate. If you guys have heard of it, you know, do tell me. I'm definitely going to watch it. Telekinetic Throws, Initiation, Nether Blast, going to be stolen. It's actually going to be used. Pugna looking solo. He's going to go down. Nice right-click job. Keep in mind, like, half their team has gone. Reality Rift, four seconds down on the pan. Is he going to get his ultimate? Is he going to get his ultimate? They managed to bring down the brute. They managed to bring down um, the other guy. Beastmaster, and here it goes, surrounding, are they going to be able to do it? Here's the ultimate, Fisher to initiate slightly early, oh, the chain stuns, two seconds stun going off with Earthshaker, not the hero you wanted to stun, oh, at least going to get the Chaos Knight, Kaling Spree coming in from the Invoker, um, what was I saying, Madoka Box, anyway, I watched it, and it was like the first 15 seconds, like the first minute and a half, I was like blowing my mind, because I saw the pictures, I thought, oh, this is some lowly... School girls. Oh my man, man, was that was that a good one and a half minutes? It was like sucker punch meets Powerpuff Girls. It was, it was pretty darn good. It was like darker than black. I saw influences from like 
I don't even know what I saw influences from. It was pretty good. Um, I haven't watched the full episode yet, so I actually interrupted it because uh, I was watching it while I was rendering all my videos for the previous game you guys saw. Anyway, that's enough about that. Uh, I'm going to finish off that episode. It looks pretty, pretty darn awesome. Hopefully it's not like all a dream or something. But yeah, that first minute and a half, pretty darn good. Anyway, going to be seeing you guys later. Hopefully, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, yeah. Stay thirsty, my friends.